In this lesson, we will examine various strategies to consider when tackling data sufficiency questions. To begin, whenever you encounter a data sufficiency question, it's often a good idea to ask, what are the possible answers to the target question? Now, all target questions are impossible to solve without any additional information. In other words, for any target question, there will be more than one possible answer. Your task is to determine whether each statement provides enough information to reduce the list of possible answers down to just one answer. So, it's a good idea to know the range of possible answers to the target question before examining the statements. For example, if the target question is, is x less than y, there are only two possible answers, yes or no. So your goal will be to determine whether each statement reduces these two possible answers down to just one definitive answer. Here's another target question. If x is a positive integer, what is the remainder when x is divided by 4? So what are the possible answers to this target question? What are the possible remainders when a number is divided by 4? Well, since a remainder is always less than the divisor, the possible answers here are 0, 1, 2, and 3. So when we examine our statements, our goal will be to determine whether each statement reduces these four possible answers down to just one answer. Okay, here's one last target question. What is the value of x? Here, the possible answers consist of any number. Okay, this next strategy follows from the first strategy. It is, determine whether the target question is a yes-no question or a value question. Now, every data sufficiency target question is either a yes-no question or a specific value question. For yes-no questions, you must determine whether the answer to the target question is always yes or always no. For value questions, you must determine whether there is one unique value that can be deduced using the information provided in the statements. So, for example, the target question, is triangle ABC an equilateral triangle, is a yes-no question. So is the question, is integer k greater than 11? Conversely, the question, how many students attend Jefferson Elementary, is asking for a specific value. So in order for a statement to be sufficient, it must provide enough information to narrow the range of possible answers down to just one answer. The target question, how much does a cheeseburger cost at Burgerland, is another example of a value question. Another strategy to consider when tackling data sufficiency questions is to ask what information would help answer the target question. By considering information that would help answer the target question, you may gain some insight into what statements would be sufficient. For example, this target question asks, what is the average? or arithmetic mean, of the numbers w, x, and y. So what information would be useful to help us find the average of three numbers? Well, since the average of three numbers is found by adding the three numbers and dividing by three, it would be useful to know the sum of w, x, and y. If we knew the sum, then we could take the sum and divide it by three to find the average. Of course, there are other pieces of information that might also help us find the average. Our goal with this strategy is to identify some information that would be sufficient to answer the target question. Then if we spot that same information in one of the statements, we will know that the statement must be sufficient. Here's another example. The target question asks, what is the area of circle C? So what information would be useful to help us find the area of this circle? Well, since the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared, where r is the circle's radius, it would be useful to know the radius of the circle, or perhaps the diameter. Also, if we were given the circumference of the circle, we would be able to determine its radius and subsequently its area. Once again, there are several pieces of information that might also help us find the area of a given circle. The goal here is to simply identify some information that might help us gain some insight into the question. There are several other strategies to consider when tackling data sufficiency questions, and we will examine them in future lessons. These strategies include summarizing the information in the target question and assigning variables if necessary, rephrasing the target question to help identify whether or not the statements are sufficient, 
asking for each statement, does this statement provide sufficient information to answer the target question, using the table method for statements that feel insufficient, and guessing strategically. We'll examine these strategies shortly.